to be close to him just to be close to him today i'm gonna give you maybe maybe you can do this in 15 20 minutes i'm not rushing it but i just want to tell you what you are i'm going to tell you what you are i want you to go to psalm 91 we're just going to stick in um king new king james version it's just new king james version that's good I want to tell you what you are. I'm going to give you 12 things that you are. And so get your pen and paper down. I want you to write this down so that when people ask you, you can tell them what you are. 12 things that you are. Psalm 91. We're reading the whole psalm. Verses 1 to 16. New King James Version. If you're with me, say amen. It's on the screen. Watch this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste in the noonday, nor of the coronavirus. Okay, that's my own version. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because he has this is what god has said because he has set his love upon me Therefore, I would deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. He will be, I, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I'm going to tell you 12 things that you are. It begins, it's all under this one. Turn to somebody and tell them, neighbor, I'm covered. That's it right there. I'm covered. Say it again. I'm covered. Look at somebody else and tell, tell them I'm covered from Corona. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, ushers. I'm covered. That, that's, that's the message. You're covered. Covered. Now, listen, in all of the hysteria of all, all that's going on, folks buying up all the toilet tissue and, and Kroger's and Walmart and all that kind of stuff, and all of the hysterica, hysteria, listen, we who are kingdom citizens, we who are living the kingdom life. How you living? And what kind of life is that? We who are living the kingdom life are not worried. We're not stressed. We're not panicking. Why? Because we know we are. Turn to somebody and tell them, I'm covered. You don't have to worry. We're not worried about anything. We ain't stressing about anything. We're not, we're not worried about Corona or anything else because we know we are covered. We don't operate in fear. We operate in faith. And fear is the opposite of faith. In fact, the scripture says the just shall live by what? And not by. So we're not living by what people, what, what we see. We live by what God has said. Now understand this. I want you to get this. Fear, both fear and faith is a seed. I want to make sure you get this. Fear and faith is a seed. Fear is a seed that when it is sown brings forth the fruit of what is being feared. Please get this. Fear is a seed that when it's sown into your heart and your mind, it brings forth the fruit of what you are fearing. Let me give you the scripture as a reference. Job chapter three, verse 25. In Job chapter one, we find that Satan comes before God and he wants to attack. He wants to attack uh, uh, Job and he attacks Job. God allows him to attack Job, take Job's finances, uh, attacks his finances, his wealth, but also his family. In Job chapter two, Satan attacks Job's body. He's sick. But in Job chapter three, in, in Job chapter two, uh, Job, when, when, when sickness first comes into his life, Job says the Lord gives, the Lord takes away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. But after Job has been 
sick for a while. Job, Job now begins to probe in his mind and think about the cause, maybe the cause of what has come upon him. If you look at Job chapter 3, uh, verse 25, Job makes this statement. For the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me and what I dreaded has happened to me. He says, the thing that I, I greatly feared, the very thing I feared has come upon me. I believe the reason why it came upon him is because he feared it in the first place. He sold the seed of what he feared, of his fear into the universe and he brought forth the fruit of his fear. Whatever you fear, you bring forth the fruit of that. But if you have faith, Faith, if you have whatever you have faith in will bring be brought to you as well. So if you have faith in blessings, blessings will come. If you have faith in prosperity, if you sow the seed of faith in prosperity, prosperity will come. So instead of us being fearful, we are faithful. Y'all with me here? So we don't operate in fear. We operate in faith, faith, faith in the word of God, faith in who God is, faith in the fact that God has us, faith in the fact that we are Covered. Say covered. Let's go to the scripture. I'm about to give you 12 things that you are. Now watch this. Psalm 91, the psalmist is writing, in essence, letting, letting people know that he believes that he is covered. In the midst of pestilence and disease and viruses, the psalmist says, in essence, I am covered. Let me give you 12 things that you are. We're going right into it. We're going to look at verses 1, the, the, uh, the, the, whole, the whole chapter, verse 1. Listen to what he says in verse 1. He says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The first thing is, write this down, you're shielded. Say, I'm shielded. He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. A shadow is a shield from the rays of the sun so that you do not get burned. You need to know that in spite of and in the midst of everything that's taking place in your life, you have a shield around you that covers you from the hot the hot rays and the hot tempest of life's problems and life's life circumstances god has shielded you so that what is out there doesn't affect you say i'm shielded god has shielded you you're not being burned you're not being burned up you're not being toasted you're not you're not you're not you're, you're not you're, you're, you're not you're not experiencing what other folk are experiencing because you are shielded the second thing, verse two, listen to what he says. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. The second thing you are, you are protected. A refuge and a fortress is a place of protection. Say it, I'm protected. You are, you need to know that you have, you are protected. The reason why some stuff hasn't already happened to you is because God has protected you. You need to get this. You need to get this. See, I told him this this morning, eight o'clock service. I don't just shout because of what I know God has done for me. I shout for what I don't know God has done to keep me from stuff. Come on, y'all, somebody. God has protected. Some of y'all know right now. In fact, Brother Smith just stood up and told us about it. In the midst of what sickness attacking, God will protect you and keep you from going. You, you ought to give God praise right here. Protected. Say it. I'm, I'm protected. All right. Not only you 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 shield it, you protect it. Verse three. Listen to this. Surely you shall deliver. Uh, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Say this. I am delivered. Come on. Come on. Say it. I'm delivered. I am delivered. Some of you all not not all of you. I'm sure it's not all of you. But some of you all know that there were folk who meant evil against you. Do I have a witness in here? There's, some of you all can testify to the fact that there are people who try to knock you out, kill you, and even said you would when you were down, you wouldn't get back up. But they don't know how they they can't figure out right now how you still stand. And you can tell them it's because I've been D. You ought to bless the Lord right there. Deliver when folk trying to knock you. That's why I love my haters. I love I love haters because haters are waiting on you to fall. But in the midst of them waiting, they still keep, keep watching me get higher and higher and higher. Why? Because I am D. <laughs> Say it, I'm delivered. All right, number four, the fourth thing, watch this. He shall cover you 
with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and buckler here you go number one was you're shielded number four the number four is you're sheltered you're sheltered say i'm sheltered listen to what he says he says you shall he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge it's a reference to an eagle putting her wings over her babies so that what's on the outside doesn't affect them Where's my umbrella? Can I have my umbrella again? Do we still have the umbrella? Did we take the umbrella away? She took it. Oh, I got another one. I got another one. Come on, come on. Let me get, let me get the umbrella. Watch this. This is, this, is, this is the reference to being shielded. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. All right. Now, you superstitious folk. We just got finished saying we covered. And now I'm going to let the umbrella, ooh, seven years, bad luck. I'm covered. Say I'm covered. Now watch this. What this what this is uh, and when it rains, this provides a shield so that what's on the outside doesn't hit me. Somebody like give God praise. There's a whole lot of stuff that was thrown at you was coming down on you. But God put a shield around you so that when every look and you watch it. Here's the thing I love about it. you can watch the enemy all around you. But what he puts around you ain't coming and messing with you. You ought to give God praise right there. You are shielded. Put it down for the superstitious folk get start walking out and going to the back of the church and what not talking about okay so you're shielded so you're sh okay what well, shelter that's what i meant shelter so you're shielded you're protected you're delivered you're sheltered now number five and number six go together listen to this you shall not be afraid of the terror by night turn somebody and tell them don't be scared <laughs> You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays in noonday. And I say it again, nor of Corona. Y'all got it? Because that's what it is. It's a pestilence. Why? What does that mean? Here, here's, here's, here's number. number. This is number five. Say that. I'm at ease. I ain't scared. I'm not worried. I ain't staying up at night worried about am I going to get it? If somebody cough around me, I ain't going to ask them if they got it. Because even if they got it, I ain't getting it. Come on, somebody. I'm, come on. Yeah, that, that's the beautiful thing about being in the kingdom of God. Whatever's on the outside ain't messing with you. I'm not worried. I am at ease. Other folk are stressing, buying up all the toilet tissue and the hand wipes and all that kind of stuff. You know what? I'm calling on the blood of Jesus. Can't nothing clean you like, oh, I wish I had a witness in there. Can't nothing cleanse you like the blood. And we operating in wisdom. We're operating in wisdom. I'm not, I'm not, you know, if I know, if I know Virgil got it, I ain't going. I'm operating in wisdom because wisdom and faith are not diametrically opposed. Wisdom and faith go to wit. You know what wisdom is? Okay, can I, sh can I share with y'all what wisdom is? Excuse me, sister, for standing in front. You know what wisdom is? It's called common sense. And common sense ain't real common because some folk don't exercise it. Common sense says you don't put yourself in a dangerous situation. Are y'all with me here? Okay. You remember, remember what happened with Jesus? I told you this time. Remember what happened with you? The Satan took Jesus on the mountain and said, Jesus, if you really are child of God, if you really are the son of God, if you really are a kingdom member, throw yourself down on up from this mountain because Satan knows about it. Satan said, Satan used the scripture. It's written that he's going to give angels to be charged charge over you so you won't hurt yourself. So jump down. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt. Don't you be tempting God. Talking about I'm covered and I'm, and then you walk into a situation where God ain't put you in. No, you live the life God meant, you live, meant for you to live and God will cover you. You use wisdom and common sense. Amen. The reason why we are shutting down church next week is because we're using wisdom and common sense. And here's what it common sense says we want to protect people who may be uh, vulnerable. But watch this. Wisdom says the church ain't what we do when we come here anyway. The church is what we do when we leave here. And we can have church anywhere. In fact, I don't wait till Sunday morning to have church. Oh, if you could be outside my house on Monday morning when I'm worshiping, when I'm blessed, you you think that a choir, well, not probably a choir, but you 
You, you would hear some praising going on because the church ain't what I do on Sunday morning. The church is what I do every single day. Are y'all with me here? So say it. I'm at ease. Don't you stress. Don't run up and bind up all, all this stuff and whatnot. And then in two weeks, they tell you it's over. And you done spent all your money. And you're talking about, I can't pay my tithe. No, you pay your tithe. <laughs> Amen. I'm at ease. We're at ease. I'm at, say it again. I'm at ease. All right, that was number five. Here's number six. All right, number six, verse seven. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Watch this. Why? Because you are insulated. Come on, write that down. I am insulated. You are ins insulated means you have protection all around you so that, watch this, so that what's on the outside can't mess with you. You're, 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 see, in, in other words, what that means is what Job said, what God says about Job. God says of Job, Job, God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Satan said, yeah, but you got a hedge around him. God has put a hedge around you so that stuff, see, you don't even know the stuff Satan had planned for you. You don't even know the stuff that, that God didn't let happen to you, but God kept you insulated from the. In fact, he kept you insulated from you even knowing because if you knew, you'd lose your mind. Whoa, God, do I have anybody who can be a witness with me? If you knew all the stuff Satan had planned for you, you would lose your mind. You'd be under your bed, wouldn't come out of your house, but you work, watch this, but you can be at ease because you know in the midst of your going out, God's got you insulated. He's covering you. He's protecting you. He's got a hedge around you. So say it. I'm insulated. All right. Here's number. Here's number. What's number this? This number seven. All right. Verse number seven. Verse nine. Watch this. Verse nine. But because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. Yeah, because. OK, because you're OK. Number. Nine, watch this. Be, yeah, that's it. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place say this here's number what number seven say this i'm a resident write it down i'm a resident watch this watch this he says you've made the lord the most your dwelling place you're not visiting the god visiting god you're residing in him see visitors come and they go. Visitors, I had some visitors come to my house on yesterday. Visitors come to the house and they have to ask permission before they do certain stuff. They, they, they can't really be too comfortable in somebody else. But when you are a resident, you are entitled to everything. Y'all not getting this. When you are a resident in God, you're entitled to everything that belongs to God. And God is willing and able to give you whatever you need because you reside in him. Visitors are not entitled to everything. In fact, this, watch this. Visitors are not entitled to go into some rooms. But when you're a resident, you can walk into the prosperity room. You can walk into the favor room. I wish I had a witness in here. You can walk into the blessing room. You can, everything that's in God belongs to. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. They just shut down the cruise ships. They just shut them down. Went on a cruise some years ago. Went on a cruise some years ago. And, and listen, the people who go on a cruise, um, before, they, before they disembark, they can have friends come and help them take their bags to their room. They can have Virgil and good collect. They can, you know, if I'm helping them, I can help take them. If they hired like a, a taxi cab driver or whatever, the taxi cab driver can take their bags to their room. The concierge, they can help them take their bag. This person can take their bags to their room. But before the ship takes off, that person got to leave. But those who are residents on the ship could go down into the dining area, eat some, go up into the swimming pool, swim some, 
go into the theater, have some entertainment, go back down into the dining room, eat some, go back up, go, go to the bowling alley. You ain't here. What I'm saying is when you are a resident, you're entitled to everything on the ship. Turn to somebody and tell them you're not just entitled to little stuff. You're entitled to everything that God had. Turn to somebody and tell them you are entitled. Go on. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Some of y'all just like hanging out in the cabin. I'm not staying in the cabin. I'm, a, I'm taking advantage of everything on this kingdom ship because I am a resident. You ought to give God praise right there. Everything. Because I'm a resident. Okay, I got too excited. I'm sorry. Let's go to the next one. Verse 10. Watch this. Verse 10. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Watch this. Get this. Write this down. You are confidently assured. No evil. Somebody said none. I like that. Shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Why? Because you are confidently assured. Sure, folk ask me, well, why are you smiling? Why all this going on? Why, why are you happy all the time? Because I got a confidence, I have an assurance from my father that I am covered, and no matter what comes in this world, it will not come and affect me. I wish, I wish more kingdom citizens were confident. Oh, y'all got it on the screen. Y'all are good. I didn't give them that. I say, say it, I am confidently assured. I'm not just assured, I'm confidently assured. Now, I, I have, watch this, confidently assured means there is a spiritual arrogance. You ain't hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> I am spiritually arrogant. I know my God's going to take care of me. I wish I had some more arrogant folk in here. See, folk, folk talking about, well, you just arrogant. When it comes to what I know my God can do, and what I know my God will do, I, yeah, you're right, baby. I'm arrogant. I know if my God took care of me, he's going to take care of me. I am confidently assured that he is both able and he will. Say it, I'm confidently assured. You know, y'all said that like y'all didn't have breakfast this morning. If you're confidently assured, you ought to say it with your chest out and with some arrogance in your voice. Say it again. I am. I am. Say it. I am, I am what? I, I, that's right. So, yeah, Sister, Sister Patricia had her neck rolling and everything. <laughs> that's right. Because you ought to say it like you watch this, like you're standing in front of the devil and he's standing in front of you, letting the devil know I ain't worried about what you come at me with because my God is able and I'm assured that he will take care of me. Say it again. I'm confidently assured. Now give God praise if that's what you believe. Bless his name. All right. Here, here's number 10. Here, number nine. Okay. Here, yeah. Okay. Here's number nine. Watch this. It's in verse 11. For he shall give, <laughs> I love this one, his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. Watch this. Say this. I am divinely guarded. <laughs> Oh, I like, thank you, man. Y'all are on it up there. Look at the shield. That should have been for shield, but that's cool. I am divine. I need some angels. Y'all, okay, we'll work that out next time. <laughs> I am divine. Say it, I'm divinely guarded. Okay, this is the example. I, when I was in Tanzania two weeks ago, when I was there, I rolled by, I rolled by the, um, the American embassy. I, I've dubbed my house. I've named my house the embassy. Some of y'all heard me say, I've named my house. It's the embassy. If you come to my house, you're coming to the embassy. Yeah. Um, when you, if you stay in my house, you're staying in the embassy suites. <laughs> that's, that's my house. Okay. The embassy. An embassy is, is a house or territory that belongs to one country that sits in another country. Okay. Um, it, 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 it is everything behind those walls belongs to the country that it represents. And so when I was in Tanzania, I rolled by the American embassy in Tanzania. It's behind wall, barbed wire, that kind of thing. And But when you step into that embassy on those grounds, you're not stepping into Tanzania. You step out of Tanzania into America 
Because although it's <laughs> although it sits in a foreign country, that land belongs to the country it represents. My house is the embassy, which means my house may sit in South Carolina, but it belongs to the kingdom. So when you come into my yard, you step out of South Carolina into the kingdom of God. I'm ready to shout. All right. Now watch this. Watch this. Now, now, so when I went by the American embassy in Tanzania, when I rolled by, I saw guards there. Soldiers, not guards, soldiers. And they were holding machine guns because watch this. <laughs> Every embassy is guarded by the country it represents. I saw American soldiers standing on guard because they were representing their country. My home is the embassy of the kingdom. And I've got guards all around my home right now. They don't belong to America. They belong to my kingdom. They're called angels. But this is what I love about it. See, this is what I love about it. When the, when the ambassador of that embassy goes out, the guards go with him. Which means wherever the, the, the ambassador goes, the country that he represents sends protection. I'm not standing here by myself. Brother Smith said it. He said he got three angels. I don't have a mother. I don't have a wife. I don't have a son. I got angels watching over me all night. Do I have a witness in here? That's the reason why when I was driving and it looked like I was going to have an accident, the angels took the wheel. Come on, somebody. Give God praise. Angels. I am divinely protected. I need some folk who, who, who's, who's driven long because I've had this happen. Have you ever been driving a long distance and falling asleep? And some hit you? Nobody in the car with you? Some hit you? I've heard my name called. I'm in the, yeah, who, who is that? Because God got angel. Come on, you ought to give God praise in here. You are divinely protected. Let me, let me tell you something. You see these stories about these families that fall asleep at night and a fire breaks out and a dog comes and saves the baby and wakes everybody. That's an angel that's gotten into that dog saying, go wake the family up. I ain't ready to take them. You ought to give God praise that angels are watching over you. Say it again. I am divinely guarded. If you look at Hebrews chapter one, the scripture says the angels are, watch this, ministering spirits, assigned to ministers to those minister to those who are being saved. I keep saying I want to preach this message so bad. God, I got to move on. I want to preach this message so bad. Angels on the in the unemployment line. Because God has assigned angels to, watch this, to not just take orders from God, but take orders from you. But you've got them in the unemployment line because you won't give assignments to your angels. I tell my angels, watch over my house while I'm away. Protect me when I'm dry. Keep me when, help me to make the right decision. Your angels are on the, on the unemployment line. I keep mine working overtime. Come on, somebody. You ought to give God praise if you know what I'm talking about. Say, I'm divinely protected. Say it, I'm divinely protected. Bless his name. Bless his name. My sister is running for commissioner. Listen, there's going to be stuff coming from everywhere. You got to know you're divinely protected. You know what? You know what I learned about politics? Well, it's not just politics. It's church folk, too. They will look for dirt on you. And if they can't find them, they'll make stuff. I know what he doing. I, I can't prove it, but I know it. Sister Bass, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I keep picking on Sister Bass. If folk can't find nothing on you, they'll make something up. But don't worry about it. Be at ease. Because you're shielded. <laughs> you're sheltered. And you are divinely 
pretty. Come on, give God praise in here. Bless his name. All right. Okay. Okay. That was number. Y'all said nine the last time. That was nine. Okay. This is number. So this one is number. This is number 10. All right. Verse 12. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 12. <laughs> in their hands, they shall bear you up. Lest you dash your foot against the stone. Here's number 12. Here's number 10. Watch this. Say this. I'm kept. You've been kept. You are kept. The reason why you're still here because God kept you. That's what Smith was talking about. The reason why you made it through what you went through is because God kept you. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to shout on this one. The reason why, my sister, I'm going, if you don't mind, I'm going to say, today, is it that 53 years old? Today, she came and told me, 53, and she said, she said, Pastor, I thank God I don't look like what I've been through. Is that anybody else's testimony? And the reason why is because God has, now here, here's the great thing about being kept. When you know he kept you, you know he'll keep you. When you know who it was that kept you, you know he still got the power to keep you. So not only are you kept, you keep also. I just made up a new. <laughs> Come on, say I'm kept and I'm keep. And I'm going to keep on keeping. Now give God praise. Y'all know me. I'm kind of crazy, right? Okay, I'm tired. That's what it is. So, so you're kept. You're kept. Say I'm kept. All right, he kept. All right, so here's number, here's number 11. Here's number 11. I'm kept, I'm keeping, I'm going to keep on keeping. Keep on, okay, I got to figure that one out in my head. All right, here's number 12, number 11, number 11. Here you go. In verse 13, watch this. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Here's number, number, number 11. You are empowered to conquer. Say that, I am empowered to conquer. Come on, all y'all didn't say it. I know, okay, you're writing. I'll give you a moment to write. Give you a moment to write, and then we're going to say it together. Write it down. It's on the screen. I am empowered to conquer. Listen to what the scripture says. Listen to what, verse 13. He says, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Jesus says it this way in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He says, he says, uh, you shall tread upon the serpent and the scorpion and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He says, I give you power to tread on, walk on the serpents and the scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why? Because it's the power of the Holy Spirit that resides in every kingdom citizen that if you rely on that spirit, you have the power to conquer anything that comes against you. Jesus says, neither, or Paul says, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor, nor, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. For in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. You are empowered not to fail, not to be a victim, but to conquer. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to minister, I'm going to minister, uh, yeah, Lord, let me the minister message uh, to you all about the um, uh, Maasai, the Maasai people, the Maasai people in Tanzania. They live amongst the animals. They literally live amongst the animals. Um, I, I have the whole Maasai outfit. I bought it. I'm going to wear it to church. The whole African Maasai outfit. When the Maasai, they live amongst the, they live amongst lions and the, and the, and the hyenas. The Maasai people, uh, up, up until two years ago, in order for a man to marry, he had to kill a lion and bring that lion back to prove, had to kill a lion, not with a gun, with a spear and a knife. He could not marry up until two years ago. The reason why they changed it is because the animal rights folks were talking about all the lions they were killing. With a spear and a knife, that's how they live. They live in the land. They live with the animals down in what's called a crater, all right, in, in, the, in Kilimanjaro. All right, so when they saw that, they have to kill a lion. Now watch this, with a, with, a, with a knife and with a spear. When a Maasai man comes near a lion, the lions get up and walk away. I'm going to preach this one day. They get up and walk away. Why? Because the lions 
have learned and they teach their young that these men are our natural predators. If it's a group of lions, they may stand there. But if there's one lion, he'll get up and walk away because he know who has dominion. Y'all ain't getting this. Demons ought to see you walk in the room and get up and walk out because you got dominion. But the reason why, watch this, the reason why the lions know that is because of experience. The more you put demons to flight, the more they'll fear you. You need to read Acts chapter 19 where the scripture says that there were seven sons of Sceva who called on the name of We cast you out in the name of, of the Jesus who Paul preaches. And then the demon said to those men, he says, we know who Paul is and we know who Jesus is. They didn't say, who are you? Because they were demons. You know, they cussed. The Bible cleans it up. They said, who the bleeping, 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 bleep are you? And then the demons jumped on those seven men. But when the demons know your power, when they get used to you casting their friends out, when you step in, they'll have to. You ought to give God praise in here because you are empowered to conquer. Oh, God. OK, let me go. This is the last one in it. This is number 12. All right. Number the, the 12th one is, is found in verses 14, 15 and 16. Watch this. Because this is what God says now. God says, because, and I'm gonna, he says he, but I'm going to say they because men and women. He says, because they have set their love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver them. I will set them on high because he has known my name. He, they, had, they shall call upon me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and honor them. With, who, with long life, I shall satisfy them and show them my salvation. Here's, here's number 12. Watch this. You are seen, you are heard, and you are blessed by God. God says, I see you. It's on the screen. Oh, y'all are great up there, man. Y'all are on it. He, he says, I see you. I hear your prayer. And now I'm going to bless you. Y'all are writing. I'm going to let you write because we're going to shout a little bit right here. He says, I see you. What you're going through right now, God sees it. What America, what the world is dealing with right now. See, say, Satan, Satan think he's slick because he think I got him. I can stop him from coming to church. And he's right. He can stop us from coming to church, but he can't stop us from having church. Come on, somebody. God says, I see what's going on, and now I want to see if those folk who worship on Sunday morning can worship on a Monday. If they can worship when they ain't in the building. If they can pray, God, if they can praise me when the praise team ain't singing. If they can lift me up when the preacher ain't preaching. God says, I see what you're going through, and now I want to see if you will glorify me right now. I will bless you. Don't you stop worshiping God because you ain't in the building. We don't need no building. We don't need no music. Some of us remember black folk. Remember, we ain't had no music. We made our own music. Oh, God, you may not be able to sing like some of these folk in the praise team, but you ought to lift your voice to God. If you can't do nothing but give them a shout. Oh, God. He said, the Bible, watch this. The Bible says, and God shall supply all your needs according to what? His word. Watch this. Watch this. Watch. I told y'all this before. I told y'all this before. I got to go. Glory is not heaven. According to his verse, glory is what you give God down here. So the more glory you give him down here, the more riches he'll pour out from up there. Oh, God, he will supply all your needs according to what you do in times of trouble. Don't stop praising him. Don't stop blessing him. Don't stop lifting him. You don't need to come to hear the preacher preach. You got the word of God in your hand. Read your Bible. Trust what it says. Give God glory and declare it as your own. He will bless you. In fact, say it right now. I'm already blessed. Say, I've been blessed. I am blessed. And I'm going to be blessed. Let's say it again. I have been blessed. I am blessed, and I'm going to be blessed. One more time, I have been blessed, I am blessed, and I'm going to be blessed.
Now give God praise for the blessing. Woo, God. Covered. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Covered. You are covered. You're covered. No worries. What did, what did my brother used to sing some years ago? Don't worry, be happy. No worries. Be happy. Why? Because you are covered. We operate in wisdom, but we have faith in knowing that we are covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. Greg, if you're still up here, I want to put those points. Since y'all got them up there, I want to put those points on the on our app. I want to put it on the Facebook page. I want folk to know. I want I want kingdom citizens to know all around this world that they are covered. <laughs> that you are divinely. Thank you all. I forgot the word. <laughs> Guarded. I started to say protected. But you're protected. You're divinely guarded. I want you to know that. I want you to declare that. I want you to speak to God and speak to your angels and tell them, protect me. Pray over your children when you put them on the bus stop and say, God, angels, watch over. Guard. Protect their minds. Protect their bodies. Husbands and wives, before you go off to work, pray for one another. God, in the name of Jesus, send your angels to guard. Guard our marriage. Guard our home. Guard our family. Guard my finances. Amen. Say, I'm covered. The only way to be covered is to give your life to Jesus. He's the one that covers you. He's the one that covers you. You have to give your life to Jesus. You can't be a kingdom citizen if you don't acknowledge the king. So if there's somebody here today who wants to give their life to Jesus, come today. Come, give your life to the master. Come, give your life to Jesus. And maybe you just want to unite with Macedonia as your church family, as your physical, spiritual covering. God is our covering, but there is a physical covering. The Bible says we ought not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. The church is a covering, praying for you, interceding on your behalf. So come, my brother, come on, my sister. Give God your heart today. Give God your life today. Come. Give God your heart. Is there one? Is there one? You're never too old.